I gotta be careful with the ads because last time I got claimed uh, because of the ads. Uh, the failure of Fire Festival. Oh, I remember this. Yeah. Um, last time because uh, I left the ads playing because I wanted to like you know watch the ads for the creators and whatnot. I actually got claimed by the ads. The um the music used within the ads. So like, I'm just gonna skip ads now. I'm not gonna use ad block or anything, but like as soon as the ad plays, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and skip it. Hi there. You're probably wondering how I got this tan. Well, let me tell you the story. It begins with a man by the name of Billy McFarland. Billy was a good boy. At 22, he had dreams of becoming a super wealthy entrepreneur, dropping out of college to start a business called Magnesis. Over the years, he managed to network with some powerful people. One of them was Ja Rule. Translated from German, I believe it means yes, Rule. Over drinks, he pitched an idea. Here's an accurate recreation of that really? event. Mr. Rule, he said, I have a brilliant idea. Like, Lord, like, yo, what happened? Ooh, I'm like, yo, this thing is too wild. It's fucking as big. Ooh. Precisely. Great minds think alike. It will be two weeks of absolute luxury in the Bahamas. I... Mr. Rule. Okay, the dude. began in late 2016. Fire promised beaches, ladies, gourmet food, luxury villas, hosted on a private island in the Bahamas called Fire K, once owned by Pablo Escobar. VIP tickets are really? $250,000. Swimming pigs. Blink 182. Major laser. A steel drum. Welcome to Fire Festival. The best two damn weeks of your life. Although I shouldn't say Fire K, because it doesn't exist. In the marketing, they referenced this island, which is actually Norman's K, run by George Jung, not Pablo, by the way. But that doesn't matter because we're not going there either. We're going to Great Exuma. Private island? Forget that. Population? 7,000. In fact, we're basically in the parking lot of a Sandals resort. In the end, only about 500 really? of us make it to the island. The remaining customers' flights are cancelled. You're about to see why. We hauled onto a school bus and taken to the site. A gravel lot with a bunch of FEMA tents. Oh no! Remember those promises of luxurious villas? Pranked ya. Enjoy your stay. And don't forget your oh my God. cup of UNICEF rice. Turn this bus right around. I didn't... No one knows whose tent belongs to whom. So staff try getting everyone into a line. Then they abandon that idea and tell everyone it's a free-for-all. I honestly didn't even realize Expecting it was a party. Bad. This guy took all of his drugs on the flight over. He's the only one having any fun. Yikes. A few hours later, bags arrive on a shipping container. It was getting dark and there was no lighting. So everybody's what the around hell? Their cell phones trying to look for their, their luggage. Oh Plenty of people had their luggage stolen. But don't worry, if you have any valuables, the festival advertised top-notch security. Here it is. But no one told guests they had to provide their own lock. Staff don't have any uniforms or walkie-talkies, so no one knows who's in charge, and the people who are in charge can't talk to each other. It's supposed to be some sort of like luxury cruise or staff quit like after festival. Only a couple of hours. But but how does it go that bad? To just make the most of it and enjoy the music, they had some bad news too. All of the major musical acts pulled out. In fact, Yikes. the laser wasn't even confirmed to go in the first place. The event was promoted as cashless, so all people had were these useless Disney bucks on their fire band. Which meant they couldn't buy anything or catch a cab if they were stranded. Oh my god. And even with only 500 people, there are So they told people to go to this festival and, and not bring any so money. everyone is just stealing each other's. Dude. But the exodus from the island made its own problems. Guests spent hours dehydrated and hung over and Wait, they were supposed to stay here for like two weeks? Why staff locked the door isn't entirely known. But one girl fainted before they were finally reopened. Everyone gets home and that was the end of it. Except They're gonna for, uh, sue the piss out of that guy. It was um, uh, rescuing someone, helping them out, and uh, I got lost in the woods. Anyway, back at home, the shitstorm on social media was just random. Because I remember this was being promoted all over like Twitter and uh, Instagram. And it started documenting everything that went wrong at the event. People were circulating a fake tweet by Jar that the whole thing was a social experiment. Some wholesome festival memes there. <laughs> and it quickly turned into a the case study of what not to do. In response, Fire started serving cease and desist letters to stop people from saying mean things about them. Oh uh, yeah, Mr. I'm sure Rule that will work. an official statement online, both apologizing and saying that it's not his fault. Although, to their credit, 
they offer everyone a full refund. Or you could always let it ride and opt in for tickets to 2018's Fire Festival. And a VIP ticket to next year's Fire Festival. Uh, yeah, no thanks. After this uh, shit stall? No. Meanwhile, Billy is on full damage control. He claims that a storm came in the night before and changed all of the marketing into lies. We got to a point that we were very excited about on Wednesday night. I know, right? These idiots. Like, and we got hit by a big storm. They're utilizing legal means without knowing the the legal repercussions. Enough. A few days later, and the first lawsuit was served. Attorney Ben Mycelis doesn't think it's funny. He's filed a $100 million class action lawsuit against the organizers. Then another suit. Then seven more. Then the feds got involved, claiming Billy had committed wire fraud, serious charges with serious prison time. A single act of wire fraud can result in fines of up to 20 years in prison. However, a wire fraud scheme affects financial institutions always connected to a presidentially declared disaster or emergency. The potential penalties are a fine of up to $1 million and up to 30 years in prison. Okay, dude. More on Was it worth it? But first. Right now, let's go into the history of Fire Festival. The marketing was clever. To get the word out, they got in touch with about 400 influencers. In it, okay, so this I saw this, these ads back when it was like the big thing while I was promoting. It's literally targeted to quote unquote social influencers and like popular. I guess back then would be Viners. These guys would be TikTokers, whatever. But like those were literally the only people who would ever think this is a good idea and have like so much money to throw around. So stupid. And obviously, okay, I don't want to put people down here, but like, I don't know. Maybe they're just really gullible, and they want to live the 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 clout chasing life. You know, I was at I was at fire festival. You know, it was like luxury and whatnot. That's just stupid, man. That that was risking well being of five hundred people. Yeah. And I don't do you people not like even research anything before you like dump all your money into this quote unquote two week luxury festival? Because apparently, according to an internet historian here, the island doesn't even exist. Instagram celebrities. And they offered them. Yeah, it's like Instagram celebrities, dude. To promote the event. They even managed to get Kendall Jenner to post about it. Rumor has it she was. Whoa, paid. music. So, how did it go so wrong? Let's start with the money. During the planning process, a consultant came in and said the festival would cost $50 million and require another year of organization. Uh, it's a case of we're going to use the money that you guys they made spend on us to then fund the festival near that instead event. of like taking so a loan out and repaying it or something. Expenses way back. Remember those luxury villas? They were going to cost $10 million alone, so they scrapped them. Now everyone gets a tent. A relief tent. Deposits Yikes. for the bands? Nope. <laughs> Food, infrastructure, staff, all were cut back towards the guests because they thought it was a bunch of rich kids paying for tickets with a starting price of $12,000. And you can thank fake news for that assumption. You see that number repeated Yeah, that's what I everywhere. thought too. Bunch of rich actually, kids. Actually, very few were paying even close to that amount. The standard price was around $1,200. Which, if you think about two weeks in the bar, okay, that's with um, practically all of your expenses taken care of, that's pretty bloody good. Yeah, fact, that is pretty good. Some tickets were as low as five hundred dollars. Six months ago, got together and got the early bird special for. Okay, if it's for two weeks, weeks, yeah, okay, fair enough. Food, transportation, fair enough. ticket, and somewhere to sleep. So this is How a giant scam. Were well, they going to break even with that? It was to raise cash. It's reported that up to two million they should dollars in have already had all this currency was spent in planned out and event. taken care of before Stein's charge customers to enough. so then they can you know but calculate and how, and how, how much money they actually need to um, the more get to proceed with the festival postponing but thanks to those short-term loans he couldn't so he insisted on going forward is out on three hundred thousand dollars bail his assets were frozen as at may 18th he dropped his expensive attorneys he's selling his property in new york he tried to sell magnesis for 150 grand but it was cancelled for being fraudulent massively in debt and with no hope yikes back. fire went into involuntary bankruptcy and that is the end of fire festival i'll keep you posted about whether billy is going to jail 
So long, Fire Festival. You were too beautiful for this world. And as man, we well, and while well, he dropped out of college to hard. do this, to be an entrepreneur, maybe you should have stayed in college and then like kind of conduct proper business. <laughs>